blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. How many know it was the blood that set you free? It was the blood. You ought to thank God for the blood. You ought to thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. 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 To our God. He's our God. He's our King. Hey, hallelujah. I need y'all help today. I need a little strength. I've been singing for the last week and a half. And I'm a little hoarse in my voice. But I got my praise and worship team out there, right? It's an easy song. All right. I'm going to need y'all to help me out, all right? Y'all going to repeat after me. I'm going to say the words and you're going to repeat it. How about that? Come on, put your hands together.
also should walk in the newness of life. Verse 5, for if we have been unified together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Verse 8. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Verse 11, we're going to 12. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We have those that are teens and 13 and below, you're out the door. If you're 13 and below, you're out the door. If you're 13 and below, and you know you got to go. If you're 13 and below, you're out the door. That's it. It's all right. You've been outside for three weeks. It's time to, it's time to go get glory. Then I'll take him in there. He don't trust nobody but you, her, and Stefan. That's all right. Stretch your arms. True, we, we thank you. God bless you. In Jesus' name. It's all right. It's, are we crying too? I was crying when I got this text. I said, oh Lord. Bless God today. Bless the name of the Lord. We thank God for all that he is doing in our lives. The title of this message is, Did the Spiritual Transaction Take Place? Did the Spiritual Transaction 
take place. In this text, the Apostle Paul posed the question on whether believers should continue in sin due to the grace abounding by God. He wondered if Christians thought that it was okay to sin because they knew grace would be available. Now, grace is described as undeserved favor uh, provided by God. Grace cannot be earned. It is something that is extended to the believer as a covering for us to get right the next time. So God is saying that he provides grace for us so we can gracefully walk through whatever season we need to walk through. And Apostle Paul was saying that, he said, he, he posed the question, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Basically, that we cannot live in greasy grace and think we're going to get the glory of God. There's a transformation, a transaction that has to take place. We are now living in a temperature where believers have found themselves continuing to sin without any constraint. Uh, we have become comfortable and aligned to the things of this world. And God is reminding us that we should, there should be some identification separation that happens after baptism and consecration. Catch that. God is saying that once you dip yourself down in the water and you bring yourself up, there should be some truth transformation that happens in your life. Now let's get this right. Sin is not just the three things that we have been preaching on for the past 30, 40, 50 years. Sin is anything that is transgression against the word of God. We as believers have become comfortable that we only look at sin by what you can see. And God is saying that we are in a season that he wants to dive deep inside happen in the hour. We, we have to start identifying the sin of unforgiveness. We have to start identifying the sin of jealousy. We have to start identifying the sin of disobedience. Now, of everybody that's in this room, you are attached to the most high and a greater plan. Yesterday, some of you know that we had laid to rest my uncle, and uh, instead of uh, instead of my aunt having uh, just one person uh, preach his eulogy, she had eleven people come and speak on his behalf. And what you found that is that he had eleven people that were able to identify and come on talk and walk his life, and it was from older to younger. It was a lot of folks saying that he was a father figure to them. And that he helped transform them out of a place of where they were to a place of where they were going. He taught in Lincoln Heights and these young boys were saying, I've never seen a black man that will give us an anthem. And it wasn't the national anthem. It was a different anthem, an African anthem that made us want to change our mind. So God is saying... In order for us to walk into this next season, there are people that are waiting for you and God doesn't need your transgressions getting in the way of the next. Who am I talking to? There are people that are waiting along the line looking for you and God says, I got to present the best, come on, the best version of you. So he's saying, Paul is saying, there is a transaction and that should have taken place. He was asking a question. However, I believe he was making a clear statement that it is dangerous for believers to accept uh, the life of Christ through Christ without any accountability. Who am I talking to? Nobody can hold you accountable for nothing. And God is saying that there's accountability because you have places to be. So if I don't hold you accountable, you will never get there. If the trainer never holds you accountable, you will continue to be in a place you don't want to be. Come on, if your mind, come on, if it's not renewed, come on, it cannot hold you accountable to what Holy Spirit is saying to you in the season. Because sin suffocates the mind of the believer. Sin, come on, make your pain leg in your walk with God. Sin will take you to a place that glory can never visit. Sin 
man will suffocate you. Have you ever been in a sinful place? It got you suffocated that you can't breathe. Sin's job is to, come on, tear down your mind. Sin's job is to bust through your faith. Sin's job is to keep you in a place of depression. Who got a belt on? I need it real quick. Who has a belt? I don't know, Zaya. I need the belt quickly. How did I see it? Hurry up. Sin's job is to get you, huh? Uh, uh, Tied around my neck. And don't choke me. Because <laughs> uh, you know it's anointing right here. Come on. Sin. I, uh, sin's job is the first to get its hook on you. Huh? As long as he got a good hook, just like a fisherman. Uh, come on. It can begin to tighten up on you. Uh, it can begin to say, hey, I can get closer to this individual. It begin, come on, you start to see a change. Come on, in your worship, that you won't feel the same that you used to feel. You wonder why the glory of God ain't standing on you because the sin is trying to suffocate you. Sin knows. Uh, first of all, sin's daddy is Satan. It's SNS. Come on. Satan knows where you are going. So he has to send his little demonic baby to try to cuff you. Come on. By the neck. And as sin continues to cuff you by the neck, it will get you to a place where you cannot breathe. It will get you to a place where you feel suffering. It won't get you to a place when you say I can't think straight. It won't get you to a place when you say I need some relief. It won't get you to a place. It'll say it will get you to a place that you are out of the power and the place of God. And then when the baby demon Harassier gets you so hooked up, come on, choked. Come on, uh, stand up here, hurry up. I don't he would then send a bigger demon. Because hold this, the one demon was to cuff you uh, in the spirit. The bigger demon, now pull, come on, now turn around. There you go, turn yourself around. All right, the bigger demon, now start walking. It will take you to places, come out this way. It will take you to places, just keep pulling. I tell you, it will take you to places that you start. I gotta say, that's it. I gotta say, it will take you to people and places, to things. Come on, that will get you caught up in the spirit, and you are wondering what has led you away from the presence of God, and you trying to find your way out. But first, you gotta answer the big demon. Hello, somebody, and you don't get to separate. Keep walking. Come on, come on. I got 
got another shirt on. Just unbutton this a little bit. Uh, the top one. But let me believe us. All right. Now, there we go. Now tuck it in there for me. Come on. That's it. Tuck it down in there. I thought I was see Now, welcome me back up. Uh, a believing believer, believer, is someone who knows how to hide their sin because they become comfortable with the sin that's in their life. And so when the pastor comes and says, it's time for deliverance, you bring your believing self up to that altar. And baby, because you don't want to let go of what you think is keeping you, you just go up there and you throw up a little bit. You sit down and you worship just a little bit. Because he understood the biblical literacy can 
be the major factor as to why believers backslide. Philip dip and dive back into sin. I always say that the word should make you get up and do something. Apostle Paul was using baptism in verse 4 as we were going under the water. Now imagine when you went to get baptized. As we were going, come on, under the water, we were being buried and covered. And come on, in that moment. So as you went deep down in the water and they hold your nose and they dip your back, it's because you were being buried in the water. You were being covered and immersed. Washing you white right clean as snow. So when you stood up in the water, you were raising like your daddy did on the third day. You were raising because you had a new body that's on you. You were raising because you left what was dead in the pool. And God is saying that in the season, if you want something new, you got to bury yourself in the water. And then you got to let yourself. So, Apostle Paul was giving that analogy because he was saying that once we were buried in the water and covered and raising from the dead, the lifestyle coming up out of the water, just as Jesus did from the dead, something should have changed. It's like Dr. Roper, she done lost her way. So, baby. The tights look a little bit different. She wearing the other little medium shirt. Because she knows all that walking and that running and that lifting and that jumping jack. There's something better look different. So when they say, you look like you lost weight, I sure did. Because she knew that something had to be different. You cannot die from something and still live in the same state and practices. Uh, you can't sign up for the gym membership expecting a change if you continue to eat the same things and not make any physical changes. We do not hear a lot of teaching on sin because many teachers are bound in it. Catch that. Uh, my Lord, we do not hear a, a lot of biblical teaching on sin because there are many teachers who are bound in the very thing and choking them at the neck. What is sin? Well, I'm glad that you ask. Sin is a transgression of the law. It's basically trying to bust through the biblical practices. Sin wants to tear up your faith. Sin wants you down to your last drop, your last piece of depression. Sin wants to get you to a place. Hit the lights for me real quick. I know I like when the lights are out. Sin wants to get you to a place where you're so depressed and you so upset and then you start reminiscing why you are in your dark place of where you thought you should be and how you thought you should be accomplished and why the church ain't working for you and God is saying it's not working for you because you have not allowed the transaction to take place so sin wants to welcome you in that's why in Genesis it said the tree of life and the tree of evil and see, the serpent was able to talk to Eve to make her believe that where she was and what God had provided for her was not enough. And so he was able to cuff her in a place and allow her to eat of the deadly fruit, come on, deadly, that will kill what God was trying to build inside of the believer. God is trying to build you up to a place. He is trying to build who all got a Bible in here? He's trying to build. Set those Bibles on there. He's trying to build you in a biblical place. So listen, keep on. Come on. This is you in your temple. God wants to build you up. Come on. He wants to build you in a spiritual way. Come on. Hurry. Another shit. He wants to build you in such a way. Who am I talking? your foundation 
is strong. There's so much in here. You can stand on it. Because if I build up from the foundation, that's how you know how good a house is. It says it's the foundation of the house. So if I am built on my foundation, then I can stand up on anything. If I allow God to build my foundation of my mind, I can stand up against any demon. If I allow God to build my foundation in my spirit, I can stand up in a way like never before. If I allow God to build me, He can do something with me. If I allow God to build me, he can do something with me. Tell your neighbor, if I allow to build me, he can do something with me. I asked all y'all Bibles, come on. I want y'all to see why the devil wants to keep you away from that word. And I'll get that one too. God, huh, to build me. Huh. Now you put that one next to it at the bottom. Huh. Huh. Oh, sorry. If I allow God to just build me, huh. how do I see it? I will have the ability huh, to do something. If I huh, allow God just to build me up, okay. Come up here. She's a little shaky. How about I see? Uh, you young man, I need you real quick. Come on. Children of God, 
and it is not yet made clear what we will be after his coming. We know that when he comes and is revealed, we as his children be like him because we will see him just as he is in all his glory. And everyone who has this hope, confident place in him, purifies himself just as he is pure, holy, undefiled, and guiltless. Uh, everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness, ignoring God's law by action or neglect, or by tolerating wrongdoing, being unconstrained by his commands and his will. And see, here's the thing. We have to learn obedience because when we are obedient to God, we are in God's covering. When you are obedient to the voice of God, then you will keep yourself out of danger because you know the voice of God is speaking to you at that moment. That if he's saying, don't go here and don't do that, you know it's your daddy's voice. So I ain't even got to worry about why he don't and obedience that I am not over there. And God is saying the biggest sin is disobedience. So it's saying in the text that we have to be obedient to God. He says no one, verse 6, abides in him who remains united in fellowship with uh, Hiroshiah. And fellowship with worth of uh, blame uh, and in delivering habitual practices of sin. No one who habitually sins has seen him or known him. It says, Little children, believers, dear ones, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who practices righteousness, the one who strives to live a consistent, honorable life in private, here's the one, and in public and to conform to God's precepts is righteous just as he is righteous. The one who practiced sin, separating himself from God and offending him by acts of disobedience, indifference or rebellion, is of the devil high and takes his inner character and morals value from him, not God. For the devil has sinned and violated God's law from the beginning it says the son of god appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil no one who's born of god deliberately knowingly and habitually practicing because god's seed his principle of life the assessments of his righteous character remains permanently in him who is born again my lord who is reborn from above, spiritual, transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. Catch that. You get set apart for the purpose of God. For the plans of God. Come on, for the position of God. There was a plan for your life for the purpose of God. Not just for you. And it will say, he who is born again can, cannot habitually live a life characterized by sin because he is born of God and longs to please him. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are clearly identified. Anyone who does not practice righteousness, who does not seek God's will in thought, action, and purpose is not of God. Nor is the one who does not unselfishly love his believing brother. I said last week, it is more dangerous to be deceived than to go to war. In war, you know your enemy. But when you're being deceived, you don't know what they're trying to do to you. So you have to take on the biblical practices of Christ. And, and here's my last point, redemption. Say redemption. Redemption means the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. It says the action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange, a payment, or clearing a debt. God sent his only son for exchange of our life. He gave up all the debt. He says it's debt paid in full for you and me. 
as Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3, 3-4. Three I'll go here and read it so you don't have to. Jesus answered him because Nicodemus said, how do I get saved? He says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless a person is born again, reborn from above, spiritual, transformed, renewed, and sanctified, he cannot ever see and experience the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter his mother's womb a second time and be born, can he? Jesus answered, I assure you and will solemnly say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot ever enter the kingdom. Unless one is born of water, the baptism, the sanctification, the consecration, he can never enter the kingdom. Why am I saying that? Could you imagine going to church all your life? And they talk about at the door, talk about you ain't on a list. <laughs> Check it again. Baby, you're not on a list. Step to the left. And God is saying he's given us all an opportunity to get it right a second time. So how will you posture yourself in this season that you cannot habitually live in a place that dishonors and displeases God? So maybe you say to yourself, I, I probably need to be dipped again. Maybe. But as you, before you get dipped, what you need to say to yourself, am I tired of being sick and tired? And have I made up my mind? You don't want to miss the flow of God. I've been to 99,000 funerals. How did I see it? But this funeral I went to yesterday, I was more than confident that he was going to heaven. Because I seen the DNA of God on his life. That I knew that I knew that he was going to heaven. When they told me that they said, do you want to come and view the body? How did I see it? I said, I don't need to go to the final viewing because I know where he is now. So it ain't no point in me going to a dead place when his new life has already transformed. I was confident. And so God is saying to us, have we been transformed? Did the transaction take place? This is not condemnation. This is an opportunity for us to be corrected where there's accountability. Come on. And I see. Please stand. And I see. So, Father, we pray for everyone that's in this house, including myself, that if there's anything in us that is not of you, that, Father, you pull it at its root. Because, Father, we want to be free indeed in this hour. We don't want to be deceived, dishonored, depressed, su on suicide watch. But, Father, in this season, we want to walk in your glory and in your power. So, Father, we ask you, Father, to clean us today. Have your way. Clean us, O oh God. White as snow. If there's one in this room that have not given their life to Christ, you need to repeat after me. If there is one that needs to rededicate their life to Christ, hit it on Just repeat after me. Say, Father, I repent. I welcome you in my life. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And with your dutiful power, you raised him on the third day. And Father, I welcome you as the head chief. If you just said that, you're just giving your life to Christ. That's it. 
Now, if you need a church home, Herosiah, Herosiah, you need to get to one that will keep you, cover you, correct you, elevate you, love on you, whether it's here or another place. I suggest you get there quickly. Amen. And if you want to be here, Sister Ila, raise your hand. You can get with her after the service. Herosiah. If you need prayer specifically about something, before you walk out of this anointing, get to Dr. Roper. She'll be standing right here. And do it quickly, you all. At the service, she'll be waiting for you. We're going to do tithes and offering quickly. Amen. Be 